Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to combine some over dyeing glazing and resist dyeing techniques to over dye this commercially dyed skein of chroma worsted. I love chroma, and this colorway is so me. But when I ordered the grab bags, the mystery grab bags from Knit Picks, I challenged myself to over dye whatever came in them. And this is too nice of an opportunity to pass up. I think that if I had dyed this stunning gradient yarn on my own, I wouldn't have the nerve to try what I'm doing tonight. So this is the perfect base to play around with. The color I'm starting with is the color Lupine. Chromo Worsted is 70% wool, 30% nylon. And although I haven't dyed this single ply yarn before, I've dyed some of the same fiber content the Chroma Twist yarn, and it picked up dye beautifully. As for the resist itself, I cut a number of maybe eight inch pieces of acrylic yarn, and I'm gonna use this to knot along this hank. Uh, so that way there are portions of the yarn where the dye cannot bind easily. And therefore we will preserve some of the original color while also over dyeing the majority of the yarn. I should also add that chroma comes in a ball form. It doesn't usually come as a hank. I took the ball and I wound it onto my four foot knitty knotty um, to create to create this so that way we have something to work with. But I think I am going to sort of knot it like in sections, sort of like the ties I should be creating, but I'm gonna tie these tight enough so that way we can preserve some of these beautiful colors. As for the dye, I am going to over dye this yarn using some Jacquard Jet Black Acid dye. I have this 1% stock solution that I mixed back in January, and I will be using this as the dye source tonight. I could take the ties that I cut and just tightly wrap them around the yarn. Um, like so and tie it. But if I do these too close together, then you start to limit access um, of the dye to some of this yarn in the center, not just around the resist points. So instead, I want to sort of tie off smaller sections of the yarn at once. So I'm going to sort of take this section and tie a knot. And then I'm going to, this is not quite a butterfly, but this is sort of more like the ties that I should be doing more often. Oh, I guess actually, well, maybe it'll be a tiny bit looser. We'll see. This is what happens when I sort of make things up as I go along. I like trying things for the first time in these videos. Okay, this is not quite as tight as if I would have done everything separately. Okay, so now we have this tight resist. We have this series of knots here um, that will limit the dye penetration in this area, but if I do another one over here, there's still a little better way that the, the dye that we use can access the fiber. I just have to decide how closely to put the rest of the ties together. So next the question comes to be how regular should these be along the hank? And you could do them sort of in, in rows, or if you want to sort of vary the spacing of these ties a little bit more, you, maybe we can try going a little more on a diagonal. And sort of shift where these are, maybe this isn't quite a diagonal, but um, sort of going different distances. Um, and this will make it a little less regular. Uh, and so I like some random variety. Do, do, do. 
And so, I mean, I wouldn't even need to go and get all, go through all the strands in one section. I'm just doing that because that reduces the number of ties that I need. Um, you could do this. Actually, it might be easier to tie it straight and then sort of adjust the widths. But here, now I can show you what I'm talking about. So there's some places that loop out more, some that are closer together. It's not sort of taut in between. And that will sort of help some of these speckles occur in more random intervals. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch of more ties to this hank and then we will sort of get ready to do our over dyeing. I have added all the ties and as luck would have it, I had exact cut the exact number of ties as I ended up using to do this yarn. And you can see that it's really fluffy. I think that the dye should be able to have some access to these intermediate regions. But hopefully the dye will be limited around these acrylic ties so we can preserve some of these colors beneath the surface. But now I need to pre-soak the yarn and we want to set up our dye pot so that way we are ready to go. I have added our hank of yarn to just some plain tap water and I'm going to add three tablespoons of vinegar. Normally, I don't bother adding vinegar to my pre-soaking yarns, especially if I'm going to have vinegar in the actual dye bath. But today I wanted to pre-soak this yarn with some acid because we want the acid to strike quickly. We wanted to strike quickly and shallowly so that way we could sort of see through the haze some of these colors beneath. But the good thing is that if I leave it in the pot too long and we get too much black on this yarn, because of the resist ties, we should still preserve some of these stunning colors underneath. I am gonna let this pre-soak for 15 minutes. Normally, I would say 20 or 30, but I'm actually filming this episode of Dye Pot Weekly during a live stream as sort of a sneak peek of the kinds of sneak peeks that I offer to Chemnitz patrons. So if you would like to learn more about supporting Chemnitz on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon and you can find that link in the video description. In my dye pot, I have 12 cups of water. And to that, I am gonna add two thirds of a cup of white vinegar. The first time I did this gl a glazing with black, I, I used the same proportions that I'm using right now. The main difference is that I think I'm going to put the yarn in the pot for a little shorter period of time. But the reason why I still want to have way more dye in the pot than I want to use is that way there will be plenty of dye so that way dye can reach more of the yarn versus exhausting the dye too early. I could increase the level of water even more, but let's just try it this way. And so I'm now gonna add a third of a cup of this black dye to the pot. And a third of a cup of the dye is about 80 milliliters. So if I was gonna let all of this absorb onto the yarn, it would be about a 0.8% on weight of goods. Um, or I guess there's about 0.8 grams of dye in this pot right now. But now I'm gonna let this heat up so we can get ready to do our glazing. The pot is hot. We're probably below a boil. I'm gonna just go for it at this point. I have wrung out a lot of the excess yarn from our resist yarn. And I am going to quickly add it to the pot, sort of stir things up and count. Well, we'll see how high I count. But are we ready? Let's go for it. Yeah. Go in, go in, go in. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. All right. About ten seconds. 
can see that we got a lot of color in this yarn. But what you might not be able to see very well because it is still very steamy is that some of the original colors, this is very heavy. Um, maybe if I had done like even one second it would have been less. But um, you can definitely see some of these reds coming through and even a little bit of blue. Um, it, I think that part of this glazing process and this over dyeing type process is that when you do this, you get, you, the original colors show through and they sort of show through in a way that they wouldn't necessarily if you were hand painting and mix the black with the pink. Um, you might not get these kinds of tones exactly. So this is really cool and oh I moved the tie aside and it worked. I moved it aside a little bit and I see some purple there. Uh, I am so excited. But now I need to let this cool um, so that way we can cut off the ties and take a better look at the yarn. Now that the yarn has started to cool you can already see a few hints of where some of the color from the resists has worked and stayed behind. But the color, this dark color, is not black. We've got sort of a navy, maybe a little bit of black, but maroon. Um, we could have had it in for a little less time and there would have been a little less black that it absorbed. But I think that this is really, really beautiful. Um, so now I'm going to zoom in on one of the ties and we are going and we're going to cut it. And I have these nice pointy scissors. I do not want to snip the yarn. Um, and I'm feeling really nervous now. But the nice thing is that the one snip down by the double knot and then the rest should just sort of come apart easily. But you see what's coming through? You see those bright, bright colors? Oh, there's one more. <laughs> now this is fun. Let me arrange that. But can you see oh, that wonderful brightness? So behind the resist, we have these bright flecks of color. This is almost a reverse speckle. And so as we go through, we should have these colors randomly placed. And when you knit with this, you'll get a gradient of these colors. There'll be the, you know, multiple pinks in a row, multiple blues in a row, etc. But um, there'll be some more variation within the yarn itself. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut all the rest of the ties. I wish that it were daylight right now, so that way you could really appreciate the dark and the bright that it is in this yarn. Oh, I guess if I have my hand here, then the color balance is a bit better. We have, it's not a true black everywhere. It's still this navy and maroon, but we see these brighter flecks of color in here. And it is just breathtaking. Um, so I, next, now the, the yarn is completely cool. I did add two new ties, so that way I didn't risk uh, getting a tangled mess at this stage but I'm gonna go wash the yarn and then hang it up to dry. I really just can't get over these amazing colors. I am not really expecting any color to come out, but you never know. There's a little bit of a tie. Uh, I think that the colors will all brighten a bit once it dries, but yeah, this water is already very clear. I am gonna add a little bit of some Dawn just so, just to help dislodge any unbound dye, but since the water's already clear, I'm going to rinse out the soap and then hang up the yarn to dry. The finished dry yarn is amazing. We have these little speckles, bright speckles that are the original colorway showing through in a background of these deep, deep uh, tones 
that have a hint of the color shining through. It might look like there's a lot of black, but as I've said before, we see some maroon, I see a little bit of navy coming through, and then, I don't know, something in between with some of these purple shades. There is definitely some black in here, but this, is, this yarn is now darker, moodier, and also it really has a new twist on the original yarn. Over dyeing techniques can give a skein of yarn new life. You can really change the look and the feel of the yarn in not just color, but in the way that you create something. This chroma worsted weight yarn started off as a gradient yarn. And this gradient still exists, but we have a more variegated yarn. And with these little flecks of bright color in between darker tones. And I think that it's gonna be a lot of fun to knit up. Sometimes starting with a commercially dyed yarn can take some of the pressure off. I know that if I had gone to the trouble to create a stunning gradient like this started out with, I would have been really, really nervous to over dye it. So commercial yarns give a great palette for playing with a variety of techniques. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I hope you enjoyed this video where we did this over dyeing technique in a combination of resist and glazing to create this really stunning dark colorway with almost these reverse speckles. Sometimes it takes a while for me to dye some yarn, get the video edited and publicly shared on YouTube. If you would like to get some early access to new dyeing content, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and to support the Chemnitz Tutorials channel on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find a link in the video description and in the iCard in the corner of the video. In addition to early access to new content, patrons can participate in monthly polls to help shape the direction of new dyeing experiments. Um, and at different levels, you can get shout outs and videos, exclusive coupons to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store, and more. So please check it out. Thank you so much for watching.